Welcome, Ms. Jones, to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any additions to the agenda? No. Any remarks? Um, we got this from the Connecticut River Conservation, and they are having an open house. I'll just read it. Join CRC River stewards Kathy Urfer and Kate Buckman in Great River Hydro's Jennifer Griffin. Burke licensed specialist for a visit to the Vernon Dam fish ladder. Learn about American shad, American eel, and sea lamprey, and how the ladder supports their migration upstream and downstream at the Vernon Dam. Learn about studies that will be conducted to help improve fish, pass fish passage at the ladder. Coffee and pastries will be provided. Pre-registration is encouraged. This will be Saturday, June 10th from 9.30 to 10.30. And if you contact Shelly, She'll give you the um, website to register. I have no remarks. Public comment for items not on the agenda? Seeing none. The emergency management quarterly report. Um, Jean, would you like to read that so everybody can hear it? I can. <coughs> Thank you. This is from David Emery, the director. It's been a relatively quiet late winter spring. We did some state, we did have some state warnings about snow melt and rains that could have caused lowland flooding. As protocol, I kept fire chief, the fire chief and public works director and the deputy EMD informed. We continue our monthly meetings with the Vernon School Safety Committee. I have regular meeting, I have regular meetings with the fire department plan to move the emergency operations center to the town office is still in the works the reorganization of the emergency management committee is still on the burner the local emergency plan was rewritten and approved by the state emergency management as an fyi erica Borneman, the state director, has left her position. The dep deputy director is assuming the director's duties until someone is appointed. COVID still remains on our watch list. However, masks are optional at most public events or gatherings. It's important to know that if someone tests positive, it's still recommended to stay home for five days. Thank you. <coughs> Very well, Mr. Director. Town admin report. On Tuesday, May 30th, um, I attended a webinar hosted by FEMA in the state of Massachusetts on pre-disaster planning, substantial improvement, and substantial damage determinations. Um, and this will go towards my flood hazard management certification. This three hours long is very interesting. Um, I attended the Vermont Council on Rural Development 2023 Spring Conference um, on Recreation for Economic Vitality. And it was more geared towards really large rec um, departments and how to make it um, how to make it feasible uh, financially because a lot of them are really operating on just a really tiny budget or they're operating in blocks. So um, the outdoor recreation master plan meeting was held at the school on Monday. Um, I'm sorry, on May 30th at 6 p.m. It was Tuesday, and I heard that it was well attended. I couldn't make it. Um, but I've heard that it was a really, um, really uh, well done meeting and that a lot of people really appreciate it. The survey will be going out soon, as soon as I get that from the um, consultant. It'll be going on the town website. Um, I'd like to be able to put a link on paper and send it over to the library or I don't know if you have any way to have it set up on a computer for the public. Anyway, we're going to try to give it to as many venues as possible um, and at least get the link up so folks can have the input if they weren't able to go to the meeting or if they were too shy to speak up and ask questions, that they can get some input in. 
um, I emailed the town attorney on the T-Mobile petition, I think that I had emailed to you folks. Um, they're going to be changing a little bit of the equipment on the tower at Laurel Ledges, and no action needs to be taken by the board. I also inquired about the utility easement that was previously requested um, at one of our past meetings, and I haven't received any additional information on that, so um, that hasn't moved forward. I have a quarterly department head meeting next Tuesday, and I hope that everyone had a chance to read the personnel policy. If you have any questions, let me know, because I'd like to put it on the agenda for next week, um, for the next meeting. Um, I think we just have two things that needed to be looked at on that and see what everyone's thoughts are. Um, they want to adopt it. And that's all I have. Thank you. Any yeah. approval? I move that we. <clears throat> Accept the minutes of our Tuesday, May 16th regular select board meeting as written. Second. Is there a discussion? All those in favor, please say by saying hi, Michael. Aye. 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 I'll abstain. Warren? Okay. I move that we approve payment of the following Warren. 23T accounts payable, $158,416.70. And that includes the second half of the school rental for the rec department. Um, 20S payroll, $8,554.83. 21S payroll, $8,641.66. 22S payroll, $8,614.23. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Michael? Aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Jean? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. New business, Constable. New you have a watch program? Yes. Um, as you know, <coughs> constable in this town has been kind of a nothing kind of position and uh, I decided I was going to try and make something of it and put it to good use. Uh, that being said, I looked into the neighbor National Neighborhood Watch Program. It's a national program and it has uh, signage that goes along with it. The signage alone I would see as a pretty good detriment to people thinking they can just come in the neighborhood. But uh, aside from that, organizing uh, neighbors, you know, to participate in it. And from what I'm seeing, we've got such fantastic uh, Facebook participation. I wouldn't see any reason why it wouldn't work. Um, basically, I looked at costs associated with it, and it's basically the signs. You can spend up to $43 on a sign, which I thought sounded rather exorbitant, but then when I think about stop signs and signs like that, I think they're well within reason, wouldn't you say, Dave? Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I guess what I'm looking to see is whether the, the town, if there's any ARPA funds available, and what I would do is I would survey the town and see where ideally there should be a sign at the entrance of each neighborhood for example Vernon Village would have a sign you know and so forth all of those streets and uh, they're not overly obtrusive you know they're they're as small as 9 by 12 or something like that and as big as much larger. Those are the ex more expensive ones. I think the cheaper ones are like 25 bucks. But they're on aluminum and they seem to work pretty well where they've been used. Um, if we can't get funds from the town to do the signage, uh, my next step would be to try and approach people in the neighborhoods and say, hey, you want to kick in a couple of bucks? And I'll put up all the signs so that's we won't be intruding on anybody to put up signs. I would get the okay from 
the highway department to put them on the street signs is where they should go. And they'd all be on the right hand side of the street coming in and it, it's, it's, a, it's a program that's met with a lot of success nationwide. And even though Vernon is somewhat protected, uh, these signs aren't meant for Vernon people. These signs are meant for people that are coming into town looking to possibly, you know, vandalize homes or rob or whatever. So that was my idea with that. Tied in with that, um, I may as well bring this up too, um, I had brought up at that special rec meeting that I thought that Lily Pond was an extremely big recreational spot in town. But I was not inferring at any time that I think the rec department should have any kind of, you know, maintenance or anything like that. And I think the Conservation Commission, we would more than likely be able to kind of keep up with minor stuff there. But uh, I would like the select board's blessing upon reading about constable duties. Uh, I have no jurisdiction as far as any type of criminal, you know, type stuff. I can't, I can't cite anybody or anything like that. However, that being said, I'll give you an example. I, I frequently go into Lily Pond. That's a target place for me because of what we've had for bottles and people making campfires and stuff like that. That shouldn't be there. And it's town property. The access is all town property. So what I would be looking for from the town is the okay or authority to verbally tell people that, I'm sorry, you cannot be doing this here. Now the issue with that be is, well, who are you? I said, well, I'm the town constable. I got no way of telling them other than that. Uh, I was told there were badge years ago. I don't know where it's gone or who has it or what the story is, but, and it's not something I want to go, you know, parading around with stuck on my shirt, but it would be nice to have something that if somebody asks, this is who I am, and I'm asking you to leave. And I consider this constable position as almost a PR thing. I've met several people down there and I saw a couple of them at the, uh, the recreational uh, meeting, and uh, they're all hepped up about we've got quite a place there. By the same token, it is an uh, environmentally sensitive place. There are several uh, plants and what have you down there, and now I guess they're looking to check out and see if we have spotted turtles in the lily pond. We know they have painted turtles, but we don't know about spotted turtles. But long and short of it is, that's what I'm looking for, uh, looking to see what kind of support we will get with the Neighborhood Watch program, and I'm, I'll deal with the entire thing myself. Um, like I said, I've been in town 20 years, and I have to say that the constable position was kind of a TT thing, you know. Oh, yeah, big deal. You're the constable. What do you do? Well, you sit there at the election and talk with everybody and eat donuts and <laughs> so forth. So I'm trying to make it a position and utilize it to help the town and, and, and just in a very subtle way try and keep uh, people aware that, oh, yeah, we, we have a constable and this guy's kind of keeping an eye out, you know, and, and, and I do. I keep an eye out. Uh, I'm, I'm at Lily Pond quite a bit. I'm at Hatchery Pond quite a bit. I'm on Steppens Roads a few times. Certain areas where we know that some uh, uh, Carlo Rossi bottles appear, they kind of grow, you know. And uh, I know I've had people in my neighborhood tell me that every time they, you know, in years past, they would walk Lily Pond and they would come back with bags of bottles cans and stuff. So that's my, my angle there. Uh, I have also been involved with, um, through the Conservation Commission and the Snowmobile Club, we all know National Grid is going to be putting up new utility poles. They're taking down all the old towers coming through Blodgett's Field all the way up through, all the way down to Connecticut River. And they're going to be replacing them 
my understanding is with those large, I call them rusty poles for a better term, that you see off of 142 down. Uh, they came here. They came here. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, having said that, we visited the site and they have it tagged out for wetlands and whatnot. And our concern is, I may as well just keep rambling, our concern is they are going to be using what they claim they're going to be using is what they call them pads and they're big long I don't know 10 or 12 foot wide uh, pads made out of beams that are maybe 10 by 10 or better that are bolted together and they bring them out there in sections and they lay them down and that's all well and good but when they go through that wet area which is actually a wetland they're they're not when they leave they're going to pick that up and we're just going to be left with the mess. And it's the Conservation Commission's belief, and I think the Snowmobile Club is on board with this too, that they should leave some type of a bridge or something. Because even though that's not supposed to be used by off-road vehicles or uh, trucks, it has been. And my concern is if we end up with a regular six foot wide snowmobile bridge spanning a, it's a pretty good area we measured it out i think it's 33 or four feet uh they're just going to go around on the other side and mud that all up too so i don't know what the national grid has had to do with the town for getting their okay to go through and do this project but i think it bears some scrutiny and uh, National Grid hasn't done anything for the town. Zip. Nothing. And here we are going after Great River Hydro who I have found as as a president of Snowmobile Club excellent people to work with, help you out, you know, do your thing and they bailed us out last winter and we had the trail was moved because we could not go up where they're building their new National Grid's building a new yard up there, so we couldn't go there anymore. And they graciously said, yep, you can come right through here. And they marked it, and we went in, and we cleared it, and they helped us. And so they've been very willing to, to cooperate. But National Grid, on the other hand, not so much. So I don't know what the process is, but I do know that they are going to have to go through some kind of, quote, unquote, environmental deal with that wetland and I would like to see the town uh, support that being done the right way it's not just them going in and coming out and then leaving it you know the way it is they I would think when they go through it should be improved a little bit and it's not like they're gonna have to be hauling in a bunch of equipment they're gonna be doing it anyway they're gonna be going through there so that's it in a nutshell for now I have stuff for next spring, but that's another story. Is it illegal for um, off-road vehicles to go in wetlands? Yes, it is. But here again, uh, who's going to patrol it? it? And and we have that's the nice thing with the snowmobile club is the snowmobile club has law enforcement through the winter months, and they take care of you know people that aren't registered or not wearing helmets. Back in the day, it's my understanding that they pulled over a husband and wife on a snowmobile. They had no helmets, no registration, no insurance, and I hate to say it, it was a select board member. So just goes to show you that the, a lot of the people that create problems in town with snow machines and with ATVs are not legal, plain and simple. And they seem to have the the thought that well I've been doing this for years ever since I was a kid and I can keep on doing it it's they gotta this is 2023 we got to get with the times and uh, we have become a lot more aware of the sensitivity of you know the land the lands that we we use and that we enjoy and uh, I want to see that being able to be kept up you know and, and that trail is also used for hikers and bikers, you know, mountain bikers and such. So it's it's something that I think that we have to have National Grid really take a hard look at and say, hey, 
you're having to do something about environmental to go through there. How about leaving it better than when you came? At least, you know, it'd be the one thing you've done for the town, you know, that, that, that would make us uh, feel like uh, you appreciate coming through town. Mm -hmm. Questions, Michael? Oh, I don't know where that is at, but I think they're probably way past comments for the National Grid stuff. They were here months and months and months ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'd have to look into that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, where else? Uh, what was it? They said a lot of stuff there. Mm -hmm. so, well, I know, Mike, that they have. Uh, I met up met up with a girl there that was a uh, biologist or whatever, and she was working for National Grid, and she mentioned that Vermont is very tough with their environmental standards. And uh, I told her my thoughts, and she said, "Well, that makes perfect sense." But it, it's one of those deals that you know, when this was all coming up, had I known about this before these comment periods, uh, you can bet you I would have been here to give my comments. But unfortunately, I was unaware of it until I actually saw them getting in there and uh, took the time to go out there and, and find out what was going on. And yeah, that's when I was- you're a, a buddy landowner. You really didn't you, really you know. know. And actually that land is owned by individuals. A part of that is owned by Blodgett on, on the, on the uh, east side, uh, not west side of Stebbins Road. It's hard to say because it loops. But, uh, and I mean, I looked on my Onyx map and uh, part of it's Advent Christian Church. So the property is owned and I'm guessing that the National Grid has some sort of easement or right of way to go through there. Yes, they said they're taking their full right of way the entire length everywhere they're going. Right, and that being said, <clears throat> as you can see, they're they're more than happy to take, but how about a little bit of give? Yep. Like I said, I think that that's way past, but we can look into seeing where that is with the state. Mm -hmm. um, signs, Dave, I've seen you shake your head about signs. They can't go on our post because we've got restriction on heights unless we raise every post that you put them on. And what happened? The town used to have them all over. Did you, they all got taken down? Idea. Well, I when everything switched over, it had to be on breakaway post. Yeah, I just we, I remember Vern used to have neighborhood yep. watch signs all over. I know. I, not since I've been here. No. That's been 20 been, years. You've been here longer. Street, but mm -hmm. they've been here. Yeah. And ask the guy behind you who drives every street daily. Mm -hmm. There's actually still one up, I do believe. I, there is one somewhere in town. I've seen it. I'm interested in talking if other people are about putting more up if it makes people happy feel safer There's no reason uh, that they shouldn't do it. I think it works. I mean, it's a national program. They've proven it works and cost effective. It's not real expensive and With Dave here concerned about the height of the signs um, It's a federal law Don. I know I understand it. All I'm saying is with you being concerned about that how it would go um Perhaps it would actually mean other sign post. I don't know. Yeah, we have to look at the mutes and follow yeah. the laws. But I, I, my I, last I, comment was the lily pond. I, before you can tell people what they can and can't do there, I think as a town we have to put some kind of signage up first. Yep. And we're all in favor of not hot day. Let's do it. So we need to have the commission look into what kind of signs are needed for that mm -hmm. and come back to us. Yep, we can do that. my questions. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm supportive of the neighborhood watch. I guess just a little more detailed proposal of what roads maybe get together with Dave and come up with a good solution for how to post those. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to do the work. It's yeah, no, I'm a, you know I'm definitely willing to, to to help get it done, and and it's not you know that's the nice thing about being retired. You know, you work at your own schedule. Someday Dave might find that out, but right now he's <laughs> he's got to keep busting butt. Gene, I'm all set. I think everything's been said. Have you checked with Pete about the badge thing? Because I don't remember our constables having badges. I don't. I'm just going by what I hear. And the last I had heard was that 
uh, the, uh, the deputy constable was the last one to have it. Because, see, I, I understand, I, I don't understand that how, well, like, I don't care to serve papers. But I don't see how anybody could be serving papers without identification. That makes absolutely no sense to me. Just like it makes no sense to me with me going to say to somebody, you know, you, you can't have campfire here or you can't overnight park here or what have you. And all I'm looking for is some verification that I can show people and say, oh, yeah. You know. yeah. yeah, so, so it, it will well, actually... Until we have signs up that say they can't, you can't tell people. Well, the select board can make the judgment that, yes, that, that can happen. We're not going to, you know, like there's a no parking sign out here. This is town property. You can tell me, Don, if somebody's parking there, you can go tell them, I'm sorry, there's no parking. Now, the sign's there. I understand that. But uh, the commission was talking about signage. And we are more than willing, a matter of fact, to, to tackle that. It's not a big, big deal for us. And there's other things that should be done down there to help protect the uh, vital areas, you know, so that people aren't going in there mudding. You know, there's one section that floods quite frequently, and it's often used for people to go in and mud. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I guess when you're a kid... I've seen people drive really the Connecticut River at the dam. You know, no brain, no pain. Not, people still breathe. You're not going to change it, unfortunately. Yeah. But so we can try. If, if there's not a badge, would it make more sense... To do like business cards, something you could hand out. And that say, would be hey, you know anything that yeah. has that I can say. This is who I am. Yeah. That's all. And like I said, this is more of a PR thing. Well, that's what I was. You, you know, it, said, it's trying to get people to feel comfortable. Right. Yeah. You know, people feel comfortable with with you know saying, well, geez, this we really have a constable here. He's not just at the town meeting, you know, or he's not just at the elections. He's actually doing something. And I might add, it's a free service because I don't get paid and I don't want to get paid. But I do want to, people to know who I am. And if I say to you, I'm sorry, ma'am, you can't park here. Here's my card if you have any questions. You know, and, and so be it. And, it's, and you do it in a friendly way. You know, I'm not looking to be uh, John Law here. Not by any, I want as little of that as I, I can. But there are certain things that I think over the years, the town has not used the position of constable as well as it could have been used. But then again, it's only going to be go as good as the person who's running it, who's being a constable. Right. Do you think you could get a tentative number of signs that you're talking about? Yes, that's that was my next step. But I wanted to see if, if you guys think it's a possibility. And also, uh, some of these signs, just so you know, they have them that are small as 9 by 12. And my understanding is with the signs, uh, I, when I worked for the highway department in Brattleboro, we had to follow the same regulations. And uh, it all depends. It's got to be from the bottom of the sign, right, from the ground so up. For people walking, yep. Right. So it can't be, it can't be uh, huge. But here again, like I said, it's not... To me, it's a, it's a drop in a bucket for some added security. And this, the people in this town are tight enough that, obviously, you see it on Facebook. If somebody sees something, they're telling somebody else about it. Well, if somebody's seeing something, the guy you tell is the sheriff's department. Or you run it through me, then I get the sheriff's department. But that way, I can kind of sift through what's real and what's fake. And, or what's important and what's not important. Yeah, so-and-so's dogs running around, big deal. Call the Sheriff's Department. They're getting paid to take care of that. Thank you. You're welcome. Very nice. I don't have anything else, do I? Well, Just remember, I Facebook is not an official town page. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> not. nothing to do with town. I understand, I understand that totally, but you and I both know that's how I, news gets around in this town. <laughs> <laughs> if you ain't on Facebook, you ain't on nothing. <laughs> Well, then I guess I lose. Yeah. <laughs> well, smart. You don't want to see what they say. You don't want to see what they say about you on Facebook. <laughs> Frankly, I don't care. <laughs> I didn't think you did. Dave.
Thank you very much. Okay, I, I'm going to leave. Okay. I just want to thank you for your time. And, and uh, don't be surprised. You're going to see me back because I have something I'd like to see in a school starting in September. Uh, not Yeah, in the fall when school goes back. And you talk to the school board. Uh, well, I got connections there, so I'm <laughs> definitely going to, uh, and I already mentioned it, and I got, ooh, that's a good thing. So we'll see how it goes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you guys for thank you. doing what you do. You too. You too, Dave. Take it easy. Take care. You're up, You're up. I'm up. You're up. <clears throat> Want to split this all up this year? Whatever you think is the best way to go, because you have to deal with it. Well, I've never dealt with Dennis Burke. But I would recommend going with the winter and summer diesel with them. And heating oil is the challenge. Which way to go? Prepay or rack price like we did this year? Because if the price keeps coming down, yeah. But this year it went up, right? I mean, did it? Did we, it we did rack price. Okay. So we didn't pay only. That's like right, right now, if this place got a delivery, I got to call them because I got to slip, but there's no price, and I get to slip with the price. Depending what it is, the day they pick it up and bring it here. Yeah, so it's fluctuating. Yep. That's what I mean. And yep. And overall, you think it. <laughs> That's the tricky one. Yeah, I know it's always. Uh... Mm. You know, we we deal with this a lot with grain on the farm because we can lock in or go load to load, and kind of the general consensus over the years has been if the price is reasonable, a price you can live with, just lock it in and sleep well at night. Um, you can go prepay with Sandry. And we'd have to go with the gas from Sandry because they're the only ones that bid. That makes sense. And just in case anything said uh, with Barrel and Fishers because of the diesel, there's an added plus trucking. Yeah, I was going to ask what that is. Yeah. How significant yeah. that is. So there's going to be an added charge that we don't even know about. Mm -hmm. So, so that's you're why recommending Sandry for heating oil and yeah. gas. gas, and Dennis Burke for diesel. Diesel. Both diesel. So the Sandry for the heating oil. This is like two different. Offers right, yep. either the prepay or yep, either one. Okay, by the sounds, I threw out the air prepay. Pardon? I went with the prepay one if that's what you guys want. Either one, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Board, what is your pleasure? I move that we go with Dennis Burke for our winter blend diesel and summer blend diesel. That we go with AR Sandry prepay for number two heating oil and for premium ethanol and loaded gasoline. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you for having it so easy to understand, David. Yes, Thank you. more or less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. And is there anything else? How's Dave doing? They're back down to Franklin Road. Tomorrow should do it for milling. That's good. I drove up at this morning. Bridge is actually smoother now. Is it? Yeah, they did the bridge today. Oh, so, did you say don't touch the bridge? We can't go into that right now. <laughs> That's going to be after the meeting. Yeah, and I can explain. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to table the fire department's request to.
carry over because Tom would like to be here when we discuss that. And Shelley has some things to look up. Okay, historian's request. Hello. Um, yes, we have roofers that are coming. They said they would come before the end of June, but who knows? If the weather turns bad, it's or you know, so I'm a little. <laughs> I want to be prepared for because <laughs> I know that there's only one other select board meeting before the budget. Right. So board, pleasure, pleasure. Do you have an amount you're talking about? Is it your full building repair and maintenance, or actually? They estimated it um, back in February for $750. And I think it leaves a little bit left in the budget. Yeah, current budget says. So how much are you asking to carry over? Yeah, that's my question. How much are you asking to carry over? Yeah. At least. I kind of need a number. Oh, okay. Well, at least the 750. Um, yeah. Would you like us to put this on next time so you can have the full the complete number? Hmm. Would you like us to put this on next meetings so you can have the accurate number, or just go carrying over 750? Let's carry over the 750 now. Board. Sense and it was a schedule. Mm -hmm. So, use I'm nothing from the treasurer. I like to know that there, that is what is in the budget. <laughs> um, no, it's it's there. Um, okay. I think. Because nothing has been taken out. We spent two thousand. Uh, let me see. No. I think there should be about 1500 in the budget still. I know there's I know there's that money in the budget. The 750. Okay. Um and you want to go just with that then. I mean, basically, I would love to have all of it carried over so we can use some of it for the masonry, but that wasn't, because it just seems to take so long that we're right. losing out. Right. And the way I look at it is the town, the people have voted to use it for maintenance, and right. it really is kind of discouraging to see any leftover go back into the general fund. Um, I agree because I understand that the work is just not on our budget year schedule. You know, they come when they come, but um, I guess my concern is that we need to have a real number. A real number from, from the treasurer. From the treasurer, what's yeah, in the budget? That kind of, you know. Oh, okay. Really says that that's what's there. And if you wanted to ask for all of it that's left there, we would. You know, we kind of need to know what's really left for you to carry over. Okay. Are we are we comfortable doing the seven hundred and fifty this meeting to cover that project, and then if next meeting there's still a meeting before? Um, That's where the question's coming from. Is we don't know what's in the account, so if we hold it over. There's nothing to hold over. Well, she knows there's seven fifty, but and then if there was more, she could request it. Next okay. meeting. 
That makes sense. Just so I know, you know, who knows, I might not be able to make it next meeting, you know. Um, well, we've, well, we've had this discussion and understand so that yeah. can be submitted okay. to the, okay. the town administrator, yeah. I think it would be yeah. acceptable yeah. to address okay. it that way okay. this time around. So that you, yeah, I mean, I feel like it would be good for you to have whatever's available to keep doing your repairs um, mm -hmm. as long as we know what it really is. Mm -hmm. It's a bit more expensive. So do we have a motion? So I move that we uh, carry over $750. Is there a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Michael? Aye. Brandon? Aye. Jim? Aye. I'm going to add a motion carries. So I will, I will check with Cindy what the, and then the have her, like, okay. Yes. Thanks for your work on that building. Okay, we have a cemetery deed for Remy and Mary Marset. Um, the lot 618 in Tiger Cemetery. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? All those in favor? Michael? Aye. Brandon? Aye. Jean? Aye. And then I, the motion carries. Do you have the original one? Oh, right here. Okay, good. Michael made the motion? Yeah. Thank you. That's what I just need to clarify. Then we have the contract for law enforcement services. Sure, don't move. Uh, that's all right. It's good to see you. <laughs> Shelly, I noticed on page three there's some blank areas. That's how last year's contract was too. Yeah. yeah, I have the same contract for using them on the street for PTOs. And um, I had written in that we had put down the Vernon Select Board and the town administrator as authorized individuals. I think that mm -hmm. probably what we agree on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes sense. We have a motion to approve and sign this contract with that addition. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor, Nico. Aye. Brandon. Aye. Jim. Aye. And the motion carries. And it's coming along. It's just one person said we want to let it yeah. oh, um, changed up to add to have Shelly sign it. She's duly authorized agent. And she's duly authorized. And I added. Anybody yes. agree to add to my amendment to have, have Shelly sign? Mm -hmm. Okay. Second. Okay. Mm -hmm. You all agree? Yeah. Okay. Great. Right. Okay. Conference table donation. Shelly. Okay. So I received an email from Martin over at the Governor Hunt House the director over there, um, noting that he realized that we were looking for furniture for the select board meeting room and that they had a conference table. So I had gone over and looked at and had looked at it. There is, you know, um, one little spot 
where it needs to be repaired. However, you know, the more that I looked at it, the more I thought about it, you can only fit four people behind it, and one would have to sit on each end. And I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but these chairs are good size, but it's not a huge table. And so I wanted to leave it up to you to make the determination of what you would like to see in this conference room. <coughs> so it's available if we would want it. Um, and the it comes, there are chairs. We don't have to take the chairs, but I did notice that the chairs actually match the chairs in the lobby. Chairs. That's what I was thinking. I need Even if we would put them in, like in the seniors and like in the Elmhurst room to okay. have extra seating, or talk about the library. The, well, <laughs> if you need them in the library, no, no, if, you need, if you need them in the library, but I'm thinking yeah. worst case scenario to trickle down. If you didn't need them, we could find a home for them. I'd have to kind of assess if they're too big to go around our conference table or whatever. But I've been thinking about getting some new chairs because we have all mishmashed. Somebody was sitting in one as it crumbled to the ground. So I think it's time for the chairs. <laughs> but um so, so okay. thoughts on the conference? Sounds like the table's not a fit but the chair time. So. Somewhere in the building then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, fire department Responder gas reimbursement. Um, Cindy's asking for how to proceed. You all got a copy of the email here? Yeah. So it sounds like one way or another that needs to be considered payroll. It seems like not making her run out the gas cards it would make her life a whole lot simpler. Yeah, she buys them, I think, on. Um, she does, uh, yeah, she gets a special trip. But if we're going to do all payroll, they might as well pay them. Well, that's the thing of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it cuts that step, step out, out, which is. And it probably loses the town pays for them somehow or some way. Sure. Yeah, because this Vermont's got all these funky laws about gift cards, so yeah. it's different. Can be challenging. Um, well, if you're gonna make them sign the paper, yeah, yeah. So, seem like whatever. How often do you get reimbursed, like monthly? Or she or usually hands out cards at his meetings, the monthly meetings. At the monthly meetings. So, I thought she did it quarterly. It could be. I don't cards. know. He yeah. doesn't see everybody every time, and I'm usually yeah. here on those meetings. Yeah, it is quarterly. It's actually in the email now that I'm reading it. It is quarterly. So, would someone like to make a motion to have it run through payroll? Sure. That helps. Yeah. I move that the um, what do we call this? The fire department the reimbursement for calls. Be um, run through payroll through the treasurer, and everyone fill out the appropriate paperwork that the treasurer needs. Is there a second? I was say they're cutting a check to the people sending a gift card. Yes. Second. Any further discussion? Mike, the department. The, what's the talk at the department there? They wanted something different than fuel cards, anyway. Okay. So. And they actually don't know about any of this, just the chief does. Okay. Okay, Michael? Aye. Aye. Jim? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Didn't want to get everybody riled up about it. Lily Pond kiosk yeah. sign for post title. Um, you have a letter from now. And you're asking us to choose from one of these three. Vernon's Lily Pond Natural Area, Lily Pond Heritage and Conservation Area, Lily Pond Natural Area, Vernon, Vermont. Where does the heritage come in? What is that? It's mm -hmm. come with a recommendation? No. no. If we're going to officially name or title it, we want to give credit to the family that donated it all? I think we should. 
as much information as I could on the program and the cost and I think I may have emailed you I think the, the second round of information mm -hmm. on it um, so we would start with you know, if you decide to move forward with this we're gonna have to get permits for the poles mm -hmm. get somebody to install them and figure out who's gonna maintain them so it's just something to think about. Yeah. I, I think we have. Think we should find out the interest in it before we get too far into it. Mm -hmm. There is a new Vernon veteran Facebook group. I can yeah. put stuff in if you need to. Yep. That would be great. I'm trying to find out. I'm interested. Yeah. And I think the same person that runs that is the same person that already does all the flags with help from the Miller Farm. Oh, okay. And, um, and there was another um, banner that I had seen, and it wasn't separate flags. It was like a mural. And they had all the pictures on the mural. I don't know where we would put that, yeah. but that might be something to think about as well. I don't know what everyone's thoughts are on that, so I just wanted to put that out there. Mm -hmm. Some variations. I guess, yeah, put it out to the Facebook world to see what the interest is. Okay. Dave, you want to vote now? <laughs> I won't see it, so I guess you'll have my vote. <laughs> so I said, you want to vote now? Since you're not going to see it? Nay. <laughs> that way he doesn't get stuck with it. Okay, kitchen rehab, Elmhurst Room Cabinets Court. Okay. So previously, um, we authorized an uh, expense of $149 to have Home Depot come out and give us a, a more specific um, cost quote on the rehab of the kitchen and the installation of the cabinets into the oak um, Elmhurst room and uh, after I'd gone through that whole process and reached out to them to pay that I was informed that they do not have an installer in this whole area but then I did hear from a gentleman who was local who said that he could come out and give us a quote and he gives a quote of I think it's three thousand dollars to do the work um, he wouldn't be able to put it on his schedule until the fall at the earliest. So that would be Windridge Builders. And um, he has $3,000. That would be to remove the existing cabinets and install new cabinets. So I know that I would uh, need to try to find somebody. And then I had spoke to um, Tom earlier, and he said there may be one other person that I may be able to get who's local in New Fane. It's been very difficult. It, yeah, they're anybody. all backed up forever. So. It, it's right on their voicemail that they're not accepting any yeah. projects for the whole year, or at least a year. So I don't know what your thoughts are. I would just ask for an actual, actual quote. Okay. Yeah, he came and did all the measuring, and he was here for quite a while. But I can have him. Um, yeah, if you get somebody that's you get us on a schedule, that's something. That's yes. Mm -hmm. Every person I know that's carpentry. You look at the okay. local builders in town, they get all sorts of new vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> they did before they were built. <laughs> yeah. There's a habit. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I know it has to be. Okay. Um, the custodian, we're not dealing with that tonight because we don't need to. Um, but we do need to go into executive session on Alice J. Price. Now, who wants to make that motion? 
Tell me which one it is, I'll do it. Okay, um, right, so it's going to be okay, number five on the front. I move that we enter executive session with the town administrator to discuss or consideration of records or documents accepted from the access to the public records law 1 VSA 316A6. Is there a second? Second. Aye. And aye. Aye. I'm an aye. We are in executive session at 725. Executive session at 725 came out at 736 and no action was taken. I move that we approve an expenditure of $700 from the Alice J. Brooks Fund. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Michael? Aye. Brendan? Aye. Jim? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, our next select board meeting is June 20th. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh. Is there a second? Second. It's not debatable. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are out of here at 737.